So, till now we have been talking about one printing methodology uh, which was called the transfer printing and we are going to be talking for a few next few lectures on another fascinating technology which has shown a lot of promise and that is what would will work it out. So, for transfer printing we have seen the sublimation transfer printing is the most successful transfer printing method. The wet transfer and film, film release transfer also are possibilities, but not necessarily commercially very successful processes. So, today we will look at what we call as an introduction to digital printing, just the concept to begin with and in subsequent lectures we will take specific issues related to digital transfer textile printing, digital textile printing. So, this in some sense is an extension or a nice way to a change over in a thought process from paper transfer to directly printing the textiles. The way the printing industry went on to increase speeds and could print anything on the paper. So, people wanted to see why cannot we directly use the technology to print textiles. By the time textile people got really interested, paper industry already had in one way or the other use the digital printing on papers. So, like you see inkjet printing or paper which is being done quite conveniently. So, people wanted to see why whatever is being first printed on a paper and then being transferred, why cannot we use the same technology to print textile directly. So, that is one motivation which has led to this industry. Interestingly, the initial people who got interested in making machines were very different people than those who were making textile printing machines. People like Epson who were making printers for paper printing, they got interested in this business. And so, things have progressed and we believe that they are going to progress further. So, today what we will look at is what is the market trend approximately and how do we say analog and a digital printing are two different sets and methods and possible advantages of digital printing. Some other thing which from the term point of view we will try to understand what we call as a spot and process colors. So, difference between spot and process colors, some essential steps and inkjet printing process of textiles. Let me just tell you for paper printing we have laser printing also. For textile printing till now there is no laser printing unless you make the textile behave like a paper. So, it is not happened. So, basically inkjet printing, when we talk about digital printing, we basically are talking about processes which are called the inkjet printing. So, sometimes you will see these things and any pre or post treatments that may be needed, we just introduce, we will not be discussing this in detail. This is a fact which is generally very discouraging for anything which is uh, novel. The transfer printing that we discussed till now, particularly the sublimation transfer printing, just about 5 percent of the market it holds. Roller printing, if you remember we, the machine is discussed, taught in so many ways, also is similar and approximately 5 percent. Everything that is printed today 
textile is screen printing. So, either you have a flat bed or you have a rotary. If you add them all, what remains? So, people can either see an opportunity or may like to get discouraged. Why go for a technology which hardly anybody seems to be using? Right? So, what it means as an opportunity is that if it can offer things which the others cannot, then you can obviously account for it. One of the reasons has been that the people who were printing paper got initially uh, involved, it was good, but they did not know textile requirement. So, textile printed fabric has to be washed time and again, exposure is different, printing of paper only meant everything is in the dark rooms, all pictures are dark. If you try to expose any printed paper to sunlight, it won't take more than a few hours to few days before you see the change. While you expect in a textile that years of use also would not change much of it. It is not a zero change, but people still wear garments which are very old. Then the width, general width of printing of textiles is very large. So, you have 1 meter, 1 and a half meter fabric which continuously are used for printing purposes. Paper printing people, particularly the inkjet people, were not really using such heavy width. So, machines were costly. Selection of ink as to what kind of ink one should use which would actually do whatever job that does became a problem. And inkjet printing by itself had a concept which believed in four colors only. If you see your printing cartridge, it has got three colors and a black. So, they believe in four colors and creating everything, which means whatever you see, you will be able to see, whatever you see on a screen, will you should be able to print it on the textiles. That means, the kind of dyes that you have to generate, they have to be so standard so standard that if you mix them, you will get exactly same response which you get on a screen, which was a challenge. First, the challenge is making such a big printing machine and then making dyes which would reproduce exactly. So, the process became costly. The dyes are also very costly. They are not available in Sadar Bajar. Right? You will have to really, it is all standard, very standard companies are the only ones who can hope to make such eyes. So, it became a costly process. So, people started using it only for sampling purposes rather than production. That is why it looks as if not many people appear to be interested, but now things are changing. So, this is what we are saying. Why do we the discussion at all on digital printing of textiles? This is one reason which people think could be interesting. That is, printing is basically a fashion dependent process and fashions are changing these days pretty fast. And that would mean that somebody will not like to use your design which you produced uh, six months back, which means that your change is coming fast, five to six forecasts in one year across the globe, that is the kind of design you are looking at. So, that means you want more flexibility. Unique designs, great variety, now somebody says, well, I want this print only for myself. For example, your own photograph on your t-shirt, 
So that means there is no much order. So you can't make a screen or rollers or anything else just because. Or somebody just prefers the design and says this design nobody else should get it. Or I want the next one is very different. It may not be possible with the conventional methods. And because of this, the chances of repeat orders are becoming rare. If this is actually true in the fashion industry, then obviously you have to have a technology which can do this at the click of the mouse as they say. Average run lengths are rapidly dropping. So if somebody say, I please give me 50 meters printed, no other technology will try to give you 50 meters. So we have a hope. So the hope is that the textile printing is rapidly changing globalization, quick response, ecological considerations. If everything is done nicely, let's say you can print through inkjet printing pigment based system. So any kind of a blend of a textile or any nature, it gets done. What it means is maybe you don't have to wash it also. One go, you have finished. And so ecologically, maybe an attraction. And that is why you may still think that we can discuss digital printing. Flexibility and versatility. These are two terms which are used these days. How fast you can change and how many things can you do. So this technology has the option of providing this type of a flexibility and versatility. People were talking earlier of mass production. Mass production is done to reduce the cost of any production. The fashion industry actually believes in mass customization. That I want something for myself, I, I don't matter whether somebody else wants or not. Depends on how much money you have. But this technology theoretically can offer to anyone anything that you want as far as printing is concerned. So it's a mass customization. Thousand people want thousand different things, you say, I'll give you. No other technology can provide you, though, unless and until you get really a big order, you don't want to change your design. As we mentioned before also, short runs, I said, has little as one unit only. This no other technology can even think of offering. An unlimited design. Designs, there is no limit. Okay, well, I can give you 10, I can give you 20 designs. Okay, whatever you want, I can give you that kind of thing. So we have a comparison, as they say, in the electronic world, digital versus analog. So from our purpose, the conventional printing method can be considered analog method, where you do block making, roller making, screen making, and do manual separation of colors. Then you make tracing, which are manual. Screens are made. All these take time, whether they are manual or mechanized, and not easy to customize, unless your customer is big, and you have order big order, then you customize. But it's not individual customization. And therefore, we said it's a digital, which means allow short runs at economical cost, short runs at economical cost. Larger runs will always be more economical. If somebody gives you a digital printing design order of 10,000 meters, you will probably make uh, more money. But the interesting part is the machine cost remains fixed, which could be quite high. The ink cost will also not change when you use more meters to be printed. If suppose you require 20 percent area being covered in the design per meter and you whether you print 1 meter, you print 20,000 meter, the percentage of ink required to cover the 20 percent of the area will remain the same. And so, electricity and other costs that you have, infrastructure, that also remain same. 
So, this is one technology which does not say that if you have large orders that your cost is going to come down unless and until you also have a pre and post processes needed to do that. Then the larger orders will become more cheap. So, in some sense particularly a few type of uh, printing systems obviously will be creating a green image. Very, very expensive methods of screen preparations are avoided. Changing from one color scheme to other and one design to other is simpler and cheaper and less time consuming. When somebody used to say initially that well this is the kind of a design please make and design and show before approval, 6 to 7 week is the minimum time that was required. So, which obviously in a textile scene could be reduced to 2 to point two and a half weeks. So, you can have more chances of getting orders. Definitely for sampling, short runs and mass customization that is what we are looking at. So, it is crisp and clean technology. So, all you require is a file on a computer and if you link to a printing machine which is called an inkjet printer, the design data or the image is basically pixels or dots, pixels on the screen and dots on the textile. Like we did talk about dots in paper printing. So, paper printing is now coming to the textile. So, you are actually printing dots. Of course, you have to still select a design that somebody likes it or you will ensure that somebody will like it or a design somebody gives you have a scanner you can scan and if you have good scanner you will get good design and then connect to a software. The softwares are becoming smarter also. For example, let us say it will be very difficult for us to think of inkjet printing with discharge printing and so on and so forth. What you will do is a direct printing only because it will be very difficult to use all kinds of chemicals in the ink of a printer. So, that is done. So, is a simple ink which is there. The color separation here takes place automatically because computation is taking place looking at which color and dividing into four colors. So every design is separate into four colors and so you have standard dyes which are going to be used and once it is separated then printing takes place and it is a non-contact printing. The printer does not head, does not contact the surface of the fabric unlike our normal printing where surface of the textile comes in contact with the screen or a roller or anything else here it does not come in contact. So, non-contact printing this is. So, there is something called a spot color. A spot color is what we use in conventional printing. You need a green, so you mix two or three colors to get a right green and then use that to print. So, you initially mix colors before and then do the printing and hopefully you will be able to match the shade. Shade matching in printing as we said is a difficult job because there are so many elements there. So, these are called spot colors. Spot colors means you have already made a color which is going to finally be appearing as it is on the fabric mixing taking place. The process colors are the ones you do not mix before. So, the process that is used in inkjet printing is called the process colors. So, desired shade is produced on a fabric itself during printing. So, superimposing the dots in the limited number of colors which is C, M, Y, K. So, these are the four colors are there. One can use additional colors sometimes in textiles. One of the colors could be white, but generally four colors could be there which can 
produce any color, infinite shades and colors. So, what you require is a computer, software, digital printer and textile substrate. Suppose you want to print some design on a let us say a dark black t-shirt which he is wearing and you want to use a light lemon on this. If you print it, will you see anything there? So, how do we print that? So, what people have been doing is making printing everything with white, the block. So, print with block, after printing with the white block, then print on that the color, then it becomes visible. So, you make a square or a circle or whatever and then in between then you make all design. So, which meant that it is not the thing that you wanted. I mean you just want the design and suddenly what you say is you know you have to somebody has modified the design ke bhai ye agar print karna hai, if you want to print this you got to print a white on this before uh, your design will be visible. So, this was one of the uh, limitations that you have to print light colored material till the software were designed in a manner that yes we can print white so that the light colors also look good but it will print exactly the white where the overall design is. So, you actually calculate where the design is and exactly print only those areas where the design and the white will never come out of that part. So, accuracy levels are very high. So, one thing which is here is accuracy. You cannot afford to have a situation where fabric vibrates shifts its position and expect the design to be same because this is a non-contact tail. So, the drop will be thrown wherever the head is and so if your fabric is shifted, so dot will be somewhere else. And therefore, the software obviously does so one of course, has to make sure that the fabric goes away it is supposed to go. And today the software can print the white exactly where the over complete design is, wherever there is a no design there is no white. And then in the second stage you print the design and so hardware is very important here which is a printer, the costliest material. You have choking of normal screens and you say well wash it everything and then it clean. If a printer head chokes you have to basically change, there is no nothing cleaning of a printer head. So, it is a costly, so you have to maintain things and this probably will be also a technology which would like the printer to have an environment which is almost air conditioned. If you run a machine 24 7 in a dusty environment, you never know what will happen and what will happen on a print is a separate story, what happens to the machine is a greater concern that despite everything else. The printer is costlier simply because the printer head if you have seen the inkjet printing machine, it is the printer head which moves from one end to the other. It takes time for something to move from one end to the other before the fabric gets further or pushed out. So, the speeds are slow. So, suddenly somebody said that if you have a printed paper, I can run transfer printing machine at almost 500 to 1000 meters per minute hmm? or per hour. Here those kind of things uh, per hour, you will not be able to do it, okay? but that is okay. But now, what they are doing is in the hardware segment that one it moves, the head moving together may not be one, there will be a block of heads moving together. And so, in one go, they print quite a lot, when they come back also they print 
it's not like going and then returning so returning to the station means twice it has printed and one can think of having four heads running together big machines may even want eight heads running together and which would mean that the per meter printing speed should increase so inkjet technology you're looking at some drops being generated and thrown so different principles are there which we'll of course talk in more detail uh, whenever we meet next time so but think of this what you're looking at is 50 to 60 microns in diameter photo quality image can be created here as well all right so these four colors will do so what exactly happens in this process color is that the green is not made by putting one drop over the other what you are doing is a drop next to it no drop falls over each other but if the size is small the perception in the eyes looks like as if it's a continuous shade if you have less green and more yellow then it'll give you a perception because there's so many of them if you have large dots then you can see the dots separately but if the dots are very very small you see is a continuous color if you magnify you can see that and so it's a perception and who is supposed to be satisfied is us as a human being we are supposed to satisfy with the shade and color and so if that is what our resolution is so that's what you have to beat that resolution and you get it right so you can produce millions of shades so high frequency signals pushing the drops at a very very fast rate and that means at some command given somewhere something is happening somewhere so this whole process of transfer of signals creating a signal and finally this transducer throwing a drop out obviously is a sophisticated process and so it has taken time and some costs are probably high now how do you create a droplet somewhere by some method you will be pushing some chamber where the liquid is and unlike for example the paper printing that we see in an inkjet printer there is a cartridge which has got a small little chamber here you can have a continuous supply also of ink from somewhere else so there will be pipes running which will also move along with the head so that you have more larger reservoir because you're going to be printing more and hopefully you will be printing more because you want this particular ink to diffuse a bit also so that you are also interested in wash fastness is not just on the surface do we require a pretreatment conventional printing required all scouring bleaching etc etc so i mean if you require a bleached fabric you will require a bleached fabric if you call as a pretreatment yes of course you can't take a gray fabric and start printing and say well nobody likes you can print it but who will like it so from that point of view yes so you will get bleached or dyed fabric which are used for conventional printing so you in a conventional printing you have the bleach dyed fabric of course you require chemical auxiliaries for fixation thickener urea alkali acids deforming agents in the print paste it is viscous but here in the digital printing chemicals auxiliaries cannot be incorporated in the ink which comes out from the printer head and therefore you get restricted what can you print and what you cannot print it would restrict the free flow and even corrode the jets so all those things will not be there therefore some of these things if required will have to be put on the fabric first you may like to do a bit of a coating so that there is no spread 
which can be done. So some fabric preparation may be required so that the hairs that you see on the surface of fabric, which you do not see on a paper, can obviously if a hair is jutting out and the drop falls in the hair, so all your accuracy is finished. So you may like to first do that. So some pre-treatment could be there. In case you actually think that you have an acid dye to be printed, then you may have to do some pre-treatment so that that gets fixed. If you think it is a reactive dye, then you have to do pre-treatment with a reactive dye, may be required. Post-treatment also may be required depending on the type of the fabric and the ink that you are using. So unlike, unlike the transfer printing where you only had a choice of dispersed dye, here people are now looking at pigments, reactives, acids and all such type of dyes. So there is a choice of substrate also has changed. Otherwise you said only polyester, maybe other synthetic fibers, but again only polyester. So that transfer printing in a way is limited to a particular dye and a particular substrate. In the inkjet, you are not so much limited because the inks of different types are available now. And so different type of fabrics also can be printed, which means that well silk, wool, cotton, nylon and blends because if pigment is there, these are the problem. So looking at what is happening at the ITMA, it appears the interest in the this printing technology is growing at a faster pace. If we get a chance, uh, we may visit one of the textile, digital textile printing houses here and see how they earn. But of course, you are doing, if you are printing hydrophilic fiber, then obviously the washing and other steaming fixation also have to be done. So printing is only one part then. If you are doing pigment, then that is the last process. You can go straight. I think that is what would be what we call as introduction, which means we know where do we stand. We understand what is digital analog printing spot and process colors, basic steps and why pre and post treatment may be required in digital printing as well. That is it, we stop. Mm -hmm.